Bokeh Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. It is March the 3rd, 2018. We have an in-depth view going into another investigative report, uh, this time here taking a different turn on who was actually responsible for the chemical weapons attack. A new report just came out. I'm going to share that with you. Uh, also looking at how that the terrorists are opening fire on the civilians trying to flee East Gota, much like it was in Aleppo uh, just a year ago when the government was trying to liberate it from the terrorists uh, there in Aleppo and the United Nations was trying to uh, get a ceasefire in order to stop the liberation. And at that time as well, we showed you the images, snipers shooting at the civilians trying to flee. Even though there was a safe corridor, they still were attacking them. Well, they're doing it again. So yeah, shine your spotlight, State Department, <clears throat> on what's really happening. Let's tell the world what the truth is. And speaking of the truth, friends, we realize that we are not very much liked by the uh, not only the mainstream media, but we're not much liked by a New World Order agenda. We are a target. They would love to close this channel. They send their trolls that claim to be Israelis, or, and not to say that they may not be, but those trolls that are certainly for the propaganda of the West and for uh, the burning of our neighbors and destroying them. Those that are willing to divide the lands, as Daniel's prophecy says, uh, they would do. They would divide the lands for gain. They are supportive of this, but they're only using it as, well, you know, Bashar al-Assad is an evil and bad guy. In some of our last reports here, we showed you how American peace activists, journalists, etc., have exposed those lies about President Bashar al-Assad. He is the last secular state, as we heard uh, from journalists uh, there, and that they want to bring him down. They would rather have a puppet state like that of, of uh, excuse me, uh, Saudi Arabia, they would rather have these jihadists that behead children uh, that they have been backing all this time. This is what those in the elite circles of the New World Order, the Illuminati, the deep state government, uh, even those that are in power, their puppets that would be, are willing to lie to the American people as well as even the Israelis. But you know, I'm not the only Jewish person in the world, of course, being a believer, that is not for the wars that are going on. There is a, a group, and this group right here, they did a, uh, <clears throat> they were doing recently a protest when Netanyahu went to America. You can see them just as far back as they can go, and then turning the corner there all opposing Netanyahu speaking for the Jewish people. They said that he is not our voice. He is not the representative of all the Jews in the world as he so claimed to be. Now, this group also believes that, that Israel should not be a state until the Messiah comes. I disagree with that because the prophecy clearly says in Zechariah 12 that they would return and not only they would return, but they would look upon him whom they had pierced uh, and we can say that or thrust through the side, as I always bring out by the Romans, what they did to Yeshua 2,000 years ago. But God holds that responsibility to the house of Judah. And so therefore, we see that the house of Judah is the one that returns in Zechariah 12. So, but they go on to speak. <clears throat> and some of the things that this man says right here, I have to be in agreement and solidarity with him on. He says the Torah teaches peace, not war in the Middle East with our neighbors as the current government is doing. And it's not just the U.S. Uh, Orthodox community. Now, mind you, not all the Orthodox community is in solidarity with this group right here, but also in Britain as well, a huge movement of rabbis against what Israel is doing to their neighbors. All right. Now, <clears throat> and like I said, I don't agree with everything that this group does, but they do believe in trying to bring about peace. So with all this in mind, we're going to get started here in just a moment, but I want to bring to your attention Israeli News Live is being targeted. They would love to shut this channel down. Why? Not because uh, we don't tell you the truth. That's the reason they want to shut down is because we do 
tell you what the truth is. We're not sitting here uh, posing to be an Israeli view that supports the destroying of the only secular state, Arabic state in the region. Uh, we're not here to sit there and, and justify all the mainstream media uh, in, in the war against Bashar al-Assad uh, totally ignoring the fact that Syria is the homeland of all four mothers of Israel, Rachel, Leah, <clears throat> Bila, and uh, Zilpah. All of our mothers of Israel are from Syria, not from Lebanon, but from the eastern side of the Euphrates as it recorded when Jacob went to get his wife. Okay, so... <clears throat> <clears throat> there's, so there's a deep reasoning before about Syria in our hearts. And of course, we know Damascus will fall. We know that this prophecy is about to be fulfilled. But we also know that God says to Israel, you have forgotten the rock of your salvation, and this is why you are doing what you're doing. You know, when I examine news, I look at the prophetic implications. I don't just read one little sentence there and say, oh, Damascus is going to fall. Praise God. That's what we want to see. No, sir, because that's not what God says. You need to see what he talks about, these things that happen. And we're not here just to whitewash it. But at any rate there, they want to bring us down. They want to stop what we're going to say, especially about what you're about to hear that's going to be very alarming. Uh, so what I'd like to say to you is that we are looking for those alternative means to be able to be prepared to give you another platform that you can go to. Right now, we do have a teaching channel called Danoon Institute on YouTube. Totally different from this account, but they may target that account as well. But please go and subscribe there. I would pick up news there as my first alternative source. But secondly, and this is one that uh, we were talking to a friend of ours, we do have a, a, is a live stream account, and it's called Israeli News Live. But we have what they call new live stream. This would give us the ability not only to broadcast live, but it would also allow you, for those of you that buy TVs from Walmart, they're set up with Roku. And for one discounted price annually, I think it's like $2,300 you can pay annually, good for one year, you get the new live stream, which would back up all of our videos, as well as they would broadcast on Roku, new live stream, and that would give us a completely different platform. We don't have the ability just to up and pay for that, but we need your help. And those of you that have been supporting this ministry, keep that in mind, especially if they try to take us off the air. Stay with us because we will be working diligently to get things back up again. Our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org and IsraelReturns.com. Com. Remember, that's .com. Look in the description below. I'll have those links. That would be the first place we would send out information. If they take those down as well, which many times people say they're blocked, they can't get to IsraeliNewsLive.org for one reason or the other. That's why we asked you to email us at Institute at Gmail. Give us your information. Let us know that you want to be stayed in contact with. We also have those that support by mail. We can, we can send you mail uh, and let you know, sending out a mass flyer, let people know where we've gone, what we've done to get back on air. Now, without any further ado, let's look at the real story behind what has been going on in Syria, even up until the time when President Trump over Khan Shikun bombed uh, Sy uh, uh, Syria for the alleged chemical attack. Maybe those that are out there detracting against Israeli News Live as they are the counter of this news broadcast. You want to know why? Because we were causing too much trouble. They could not have the evangelical community that they need to be behind President Trump to make sure he gets into office and to make sure that he has the support of the evangelical community to conduct war against the innocent Syrian people and to attack this nation and kill the children and to wipe out the Christian population. So they sent in not one, but several other so-called Israeli believers. And maybe they are believers, but they are certainly for the propaganda that the West and uh, the NATO allies are using to bring down these nations. And many of them not really knowing how the biblical prophecy puts it all together. And then basing it on lies. 
where you're going to find out why they do know some of their intelligence and where that intelligence really leads. Look at what's happening here. Now, the first thing we're going to bring out to you, RT on March the 1st. Now, I actually was doing this video yesterday, friends, but we're trying to get ready to go overseas there. A lot of issues we're facing there. So just pray for us there. It's going to be a little shaky the next couple of days here. Terrorists open fire on hundreds of civilians trying to flee East Gota or East Gouda in Syria, according to the Russian MOD there. Now, this happened when Aleppo, when the Syrians and Russians were bombing the jihadists in Aleppo, and we were seeing a, the, the, the Syrian people wanted to flee, but the jihadists wouldn't allow them. They wanted to keep them there as victims so that the white helmets could become more and more famous with more bodies and more rescues. They're doing the same thing in East Gouda as well. All right, and this is where the 2013 chemical weapons attack happened. So this is what's going on, and that has not changed. But I think what we need to do because I have a feeling they're going to do another massive chemical weapons attack and kill a lot more of these people. All right. So let's look at some new information that just came out. This was on Diliana Gaetan Zehev on her particular Twitter page. Uh, she says the Pentagon tests a dissemination by explosives of chemical biological simulants at the Dugway Proving Ground USA. All right. Now, I'm going to get this as big as I can so I can read it for you, but uh, I want you to notice something here. These are the jihadists. This is a uh, chemical weapons launching device that they are using there inside of Syria. They can use it just to launch bombs, but the main objective of this particular style weapon was to launch chemical and biological weapons attack in a very crude but rudimentary uh, way of doing things. Well, where was this particular technique learned from? Uh, no other than the United States Army, the Dugway Proving Ground Office of the Technical Director, West D Desert Test Center in Dugway, Utah. All right, this, uh, they don't give you the numbers or anything, the contract number, they kind of keep that out of their capabilities report 2012 West Desert Test Center. And then they show you the picture, same type of pipe system here, and they were developing this for people to be able to use this to launch chemical weapons. Now, you would have to ask the question, why would the U.S. Army want to take and make such a crude weapon to launch chemical weapons that can be so easily duplicated by terrorists. Because in America, yeah, we probably have chemical weapons too, just like Israel has a huge stockpile of chemical weapons as well as nuclear weapons. Uh, and Syria has had them as well. They gave them up and uh, because of the threat of war under Obama's administration. But why would the U.S., when we have the most advanced technical abilities to do chemical weapons, why would we be developing simplified a tube welded on a on some kind of little portable metal stand here that according to this report can be used in, in from a vehicle why would we want to make something so simplified to launch a chemical weapons attack well it's obvious so that you can teach jihadists how easy it is to make a chemical bomb and use it on a, a civilian population i'm going to read to you and i don't know how well you guys will be able to see this but i'm going to read to you this is exactly what the article states that this was being used for. Okay, I actually got to go down small enough to get the first part of the article in because it doesn't allow me to do it. Uh, dissemination by explosives. Dissemination by explosive may be a single point detonation of 1 to 55 gallons of chemical simulant or small quantities of launched from the simulator projectile airburst liquid system. That's what the SPAL represents. For single point detonation, explosives operators typically use a ratio of one pound of uh, composition, uh, C4 that is, explosives for every four pounds of simulant up to 60 blocks for a 55 gallon container. It'll go 60 blocks. It'll shoot that weapon. 55 gallon container. Keep that in mind. 60 blocks. There's a very important 
detail that Seymour Hersh is going to bring out in an article I'm going to read to you that also tells us that the chemical weapons that was used in 2013 did not travel, 10, it would have to travel, in order for Syria to use it, it had to go at least 10 miles. But it only traveled two to two and a half, like, I think it was what, one to, one to two and a half miles is all it traveled. Well, figure out 60 blocks. That's about how far this mechanism is supposed to be able to do it, which is exactly what the jihadists were using in Syria. Let's, let, let's go on though. So it says here, the trailer mount spall system consists of short launch tubes containing simulant filled uh, canisters and, and bursters. Spall containers can be launched from a moving vehicle 1 to 10 miles per hour via the firing box located in the cab. Canisters explode at a predetermined height, disseminating up to one liter of chemical or biological simulant, such as Aztec acid, uh, which is MESTEP and SFR6, and, and Bacillus uh, thuringiensis. The spall system can disseminate up to 100 grams of dry biological simulant, such as BG and OV. So they can use this thing to use sarin gas, for example, chlorine gas, or any even dry substances that they can shoot into the atmosphere around the people there that they're around. The ammonium nitrate fuel oil explosives may be used to detonate CB simulants from a particle dis uh, dispersal device the PDD, or a fluid dispersional device. All right. Now, that's just to kind of give you a little bit there. I'm going to blow this up real quick for you, though. Uh, those of you that would like to pause your screen to be able to read this here so you can see it for yourself. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but just let the camera capture that for you a moment there, and then you can pause it and maybe read it on a larger screen computer, something of that nature there. All right. Now, moving on, though. Here's what's interesting. This article came out on February the 9th, 2018. This is on uh, globalresearch.ca. Uh, I think that's in Canada. Pentagon trains Syria's Al-Qaeda rebels in the use of chemical weapons. Among the most popular global research 2017 articles, the Western media refutes their own lies. Okay. This article was first published in April of 2017 following the accusations directed against the Syrian government of using chemical weapons against its own people. The issue is now once more before the UN Security Council. You need to read carefully, it says, the Western media refute their own lies. Not only do they confirm that the Pentagon has been training the terrorists in the use of chemical weapons, they also acknowledge the existence of a not-so-secret U.S.-backed plan to launch chemical weapon attack on Syria and blame it on Assad. And all you have to do, of course, is just click on the link, and you can read about that as well. All right, I'll have the link for this original report, though, here uh, in the description below. It says here, London's Daily Mail in a 2013 article confirmed the existence of an Anglo-American project endorsed by the White House with the assistance of Qatar to wage a chemical weapons attack on Syria and place the blame on Bashar al-Assad. The update, April 8, 2017, Trump's decision to strike a Syrian air base in retaliation for Assad's alleged use of chemical weapons against his own people confirms that the false flag chemical weapons attack scenario first formulated under Obama is still on the table. Our analysis, including a large body of global research investigative reports, confirms unequivocally that Trump is lying, the Western media is lying, and most American allies are also lying. The following Mail Online article was published and subsequently removed. Note the contradictory discourse. Obama issued a warning to the Syrian president, Bashar al-Assad. White House gave green light to, to chemical weapons attack. All right. That was Mail Online. They produced this article here, but oddly, it disappears from the Internet. It says here, and I'll just read this and we'll kind of conclude on this report here. Leaked emails have allegedly proved that the White House gave the green light to chemical weapons attack in Syria that could be blamed on Assad's regime and in turn spur international military action in the devastated country. 
A report released on Monday contains an email exchange between two senior officials at British-based contractor Britain Defense where a scheme approved by Washington is outlined explaining that Qatar would fund rebel forces in Syria to use chemical weapons. Barack Obama made it clear to the Syrian President Bashar al-Assad last month that the U.S. would not tolerate Syria using chemical weapons against its own people. Oh, but we're going to fund an operation, or no, I'm sorry, Qatar is going to fund the operation uh, while we give them the training to do so. Isn't that interesting? We are training these people to use chemical weapons. Very interesting. Now, Seymour Hersh, I want to take you and share with you some insights from this article right here. And we're not going to read the entire article, but we do need to read several paragraphs in this article so that you can see what's really going on here. Seymour Hersh is the uh, British investigative journalist. This was on the, uh, the website www.irb.co.uk, the red line and the rat line. We're going to read here, <clears throat> Seymour Hirsch on Obama, Erdogan, and the Syrian rebels. We're going to take the first two paragraphs real quick. <clears throat> In 2011, team Barack Obama led an allied military intervention in Libya without consulting the U.S. Congress. Last August, after the sarin attack on Damascus suburb in Ghouta, he was ready to launch an allied airstrike this time to punish the Syrian government for allegedly crossing the red line and had set in, <clears throat> he had set in 2012 on the use of chemical weapons. Yeah, don't forget, we were already uh, testing these crude methods of using chemical weapons uh, that could be fired by an easily jihadist group, right? Then with less than two days to go before the planned strike, he announced that he would seek congressional approval for the intervention. The strike was postponed. And Congress prepared for hearings and subsequently canceled when Obama accepted Assad's offer to relinquish his chemical arsenal and a deal brokered by Russia. Why did Obama delay and then relent on Syria when he was not shy about rushing into Libya? The answer lies in a clash between those in the administration who are committed to enforcing the red line and the military leaders who thought that going to war was both unjustified and potentially disastrous. Obama's change of mind had its origin at uh, Porton Down. The Defense Laboratory in Wiltshire, British intelligence had obtained a sample of the sarin used in the 21st August attack. Get this. And analysis demonstrate that the use used didn't match the batches known to exist in the Syrian Army's chemical weapons arsenal. You know, let me tell you something. If they can test that batch with what Assad has, then that means they have access to both chemical weapons from Assad's stockpile as well as the one that was not from his stockpile. Make it very easy for those that want a war against Syria to fabricate that information at the current moment. The message that the case against Syria wouldn't hold up was quickly relayed to the U.S. Joint Chief of Staff. The British reported heightened doubts inside the Pentagon. The Joint Chiefs were already preparing to warn Obama that his plan for a far-reaching bomb and missile attack on Syria infrastructure could lead to a wider war in the Middle East. In consequence, the American officers delivered a last-minute caution to the president, which, in their view, eventually led to his canceling the attack. Now, we're already showing you the evidence that our military has been teaching and preparing and building on how to make the crude chemical weapons munitions that they have. Jeez. Let's skip the third paragraph, go to the fourth. The Joint Chiefs also knew that Obama's administration public claims that only the Syrian army had access to sarin were wrong. The American and British intelligence communities had been aware since the spring of 2013 that some rebel units in Syria were developing chemical weapons. On June 20th, analysis for the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency issued a highly classified five-page talking points briefing for the DIA Deputy Director David Shedd, which stated that al-Nusra maintained a sarin production sale. What do you know? Its program, the paper said, was the most advanced sarin plot since Al-Qaeda's pre-9-11 effort. 
According to the Defense Department consultant, U.S. intelligence has long known that Al-Qaeda experimented with chemical weapons and has a video on its gas experiments with dogs. The DIA paper went on previous IC intelligence community focuses had been almost entirely on the Syrian chemical weapons stockpile. All right. Now that just kind of gives you a little bit of idea there. It goes on to say the, uh, the, the Turkey and Saudi based chemical facilitators, it said, were attempting to obtain sarin precursors in bulk, tens of kilograms, likely for the anticipated large scale production effort in Syria. Turkey and Saudi based chemical <laughs> facilitators. So Turkey is involved in this as well, right? I guess Aaron Erdem knew what he was talking about when he went on RT News. We're going to go into that in just a moment as well. All right, now, we're going to move on down a little bit further. Actually, quite a bit further. We're going to go to nine paragraphs here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Okay. Right here. The former intelligence official said the Russian who delivered the sample to the UK was a good source. Um, one second here. I may have the wrong spot that I'm looking for here. Maybe so. Okay, let's go. Let's, maybe it's like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, there we go. Now, we're just kind of on the, conclude up in this article right here. All right. Now, let's, we'll read right here the two paragraphs here. This is where it's really interesting. The full extent of U.S. cooperation with Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar in, a, in assisting the rebel opposition in Syria has yet to come to light. The Obama administration has never publicly admitted to its role in creating what CIA calls a rat line, a back channel highway into Syria. The rat line authorized in early 2012 was used to funnel weapons and ammunition from Libya via southern Turkey and across the Syrian border to the opposition. Many of those in Syria who ultimately received the weapons were jihadists, some of them affiliated with Al-Qaeda. The DNI spokesperson said the idea that the United States was providing weapons from Libya to anyone is false. Watch this, though. In January, the Senate Intelligence Committee released a report on the assault by a local militia in September 2012 on the American consulate and nearby undercover CIA facility in Benghazi, which resulted in the death of U.S. Ambassador Christopher Stephen and three others. The report criticism of the State Department for providing adequate security at the consulate and intelligence community for not alerting the U.S. military to the presence of CIA outposts in the area received front page coverage and revived animosity in Washington with Republicans accusing Obama and Hillary of a cover-up. A highly classified annex to the report not made public described a secret agreement reached in 2012 between the Obama and Erdogan administrations. Notice that. In 2012, there was a secret deal between Obama and Erdogan. It pertained to the rat line by the terms of the agreement funding came from Turkey as well as Saudi Arabia and Qatar. The CIA, with the support of the MI6, was responsible for getting the arms from Gaddafi's arsenals into Syria. A number of front companies were set up in Libya, some under the cover of Australian entities. Retired American soldiers who didn't always know who was really employing them were hired to manage procurement and shipping. The operation was run by David Petraeus, the CIA director, who would soon resign when it became known he was having an affair with his biographer. The operation had not been disclosed at the time it was set up to the Congressional Intelligence Committee and the Congressional leadership as required by law since the 1970s. The involvement of the MI6 enabled the CIA to invade the law 
evade the law by classifying the mission as a liaison operation. The former intelligence official explained that for years there has been a recognized exemp uh, exception in the law that permits the CIA not to report liaison activities to Congress, which would otherwise be owed a finding. All CIA covert operations must be described uh, in a written document known as a finding submitted to the senior leadership of Congress for approval. Distributions of the annex was limited to the staff aides who wrote the report and the eight ranking members of Congress. The Democratic and Republican leaders of the House and Senate and the Democratic Republican leaders of the House Senate Intelligence Committee, this hardly constituted a genuine attempt at oversight. The eight leaders are known to gather together to raise questions or discuss the secret information they receive. Well, guess what? They all got duped. And Obama and Erdogan made a major plan, which included the CIA, Saudi Arabia, uh, Qatar, MI6 uh, agents as well, all using them to get the chemical weapons from Syria and to you know where. And by the way, Hillary Clinton was working at the State Department at the time. Just thought I'd throw that in there for you. Now let's quickly jump over here to where this is the parliament in Turkey. Aaron Erdem, I wanted you to see this for yourself. I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. Uh, because we know that Aaron doesn't speak English, and I'm going to read to you the subtitles as they appear here. The this is not Aaron Erdem on your screen. This is uh, the the um, kind of like uh, our when we have in our parliament in the United States when Congress convenes or whatever. This is the 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 head man there that kind of makes sure that you don't break the rules. Now he's saying here to use the appropriate language when making a speech, because why Aaron Erdem is saying that there are those in the government that are complicit on the shipping of sarin gas through their country, Turkey, via ISIS militants into Syria. Watch what he said. Let me back up just a little bit here. Okay. Distinguished members of the parliament, one minute, Mr. Erdem, one minute, please look. The bylaw number 67 explicitly requires use of the appropriate language when making a speech. You may not necessarily agree with the bylaw's contents. But accusing some people of hypocrisy is insulting and hurtful. I am kindly inviting you to use an insult-free language, please. Here, within the borders of the Republic of Turkey, some people are misappropriating the country's resources and portraying our trust. That's what Aaron Erdem says. That's Aaron right there. Our Minister of Internal Affairs is here at this moment, even though his, this issue is not within his field. I wish I could address my question, and he speaks about the Justice Minister. Bikir Bozdag yesterday when he was here, and by the way, Mr. Bozdag is uh, the other uh, uh, MK member uh, of the uh, Turkish Parliament, that as well knew about what was happening inside the country there. As you all know, many children were murdered with sarin gas in the Middle East. Okay? Notice that emphasis he places on that. Many children were murdered with sarin gas in the Middle East. The man's a humanitarian. Turkish parliament member. There were various accusations about who uses sarin gas in our media. My question is about the Adana, Adana's chief public prosecutor. 
Investigation case number 201, 2013-351, 2013-139, indictment 2012-120. Don't worry, the prosecutor is not from the parallel organization. And by the way, they shout him down like crazy. They just, they are, he is not uh, very loved by the other parliament members there for bringing out the accusations against the government and especially Prime Minister Erdogan. With the government's desires and actions in the region, it is stated by the prosecutor in this case that raw materials from manufacturing sarin gas were delivered. That's a government official. That's the prosecutor saying sarin gas was delivered through Turkey. And what did Seymour Hersh say? There was a rat line made from Libya through Turkey into Syria for the moving of weapons and chemical weapons. to the ISIS terrorist organization. Friends, understand this. Seymour Hersh writes about it from his point of view, and at the time, he didn't know that Aaron Erdem was standing up in a Turkish parliament with the evidence that they were doing this rat line. Through contacts to this group's members, So the prosecutor initiated, make sure we get this whole word there. So the prosec prosecutor initiated an investigation about this. You know, friends, you got to understand, there are many in military intelligence, according to the reports from Seymour Hersh and other investigative journalists that have brought out the fact that there are those in the United States that know full well we never used, or excuse me, the uh, President Bashar al-Assad never used chemical weapons on his own people. To the contrary. And the fact is, is the intelligence knows and we have the training bases that were making the sarin gas weapons, the launchers, and uh, trying them to make sure they would work. And then training al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, and other jihadist factions in Syria to be able to use it. And then they create this rat line to smuggle the weapons. And Seymour Hersh is revealing the information, not knowing that at a Turkish parliament, M uh, MK member or MP member uh, Aaron Erdem is before there, along with Mr. Uh, 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 I forget the other uh, guy's name there, sharing the evidence. They actually caught the guys? Watch what happens though. Here please, look at this. I'm showing this to you. The prosecutor made arrest under that investigation. So the individuals who were suspected to have carried out the transportation were arrested and put in prison. Don't forget, Obama and Erdogan made an agreement to do it. The prosecutor ordered the telephones of those suspects to be wiretapped, which also stated in the indictment. You know what's wrong though, Mr. Aaron Erdogan, as much as I appreciate him, he doesn't know this is a CIA, MI6 operation going on. Mr. Minister of Justice Bozdag is also well aware of the details of this indictment because he himself went on air and made statements. But do you know what happened? In one week's time that case was closed. The suspects were released and were allowed to leave Turkey. ISIS militants with sarin gas. By crossing over the Syrian border. Now I ask you, is that what you understand as justice? To set free people transporting sarin gas? You know, let, let me make sure, for those of you that speak Arabic, I want to make sure that some of you guys can, can really hear what he says. All right, because I don't want this to be a situation where somebody later wants to say, oh, that's not what he really said. All right, let's make sure you hear what he says here. 
Tevkiyat yapanları ülkenin sınırlarını dışarısına çıkartmak mıdır Adalet Anlayışı? Ama bir diğer taraftan... I am asking. Bir gazeteci. One journalist states that... Bir gazeteci. This is much worse than all I have said before. Daha vahim bir şey söyleyeceğim. Türkiye Cumhuriyeti hükümetini... Do you know who says that the Republic of Turkey... Türkiye Cumhuriyeti hükümetini... Has dispatched ammunition to Al Qaeda's terrorist organizations by orders of the Prime Minister serving at the time. Before we go a step further, now he's saying that the Prime Minister at the time was the one involved, correct? That's exactly what he says, right? Who was the Prime Minister in 2013? Recep Tayyip. Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan is in Pakistan. When? December 24th. The 23rd and 24th, 2013. All of the year 2013, Erdogan was the Prime Minister. This is what inflames this group because Aaron Erdogan has the evidence on the Prime Minister. Seymour Hersh said that he was working with Obama, the CIA, the MI6, other intelligence agencies, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, all working to get sarin gas from Libya through the rat line, through Turkey, working with Erdogan to use there in the Syria against children. And this information is a known fact, but our government is willing to go to war and people that, that are blinded by the media. You know what the Bible says? If the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch. But instead of the true evidence, humanitarians that were trying to change something to stop a war, whereas this man here, Aaron Erdem, he's concerned about the children. He doesn't mention the adults because he cares about kids. And then you get people like uh, this delegation that went to Syria that tells you that it's a, a mass propaganda. You get the journalists that tell you the things that are going on, but they're all silenced. Oh, shut their channels down. Ah, oh, if you can't get them silenced, maybe we could bring up some, put up some so-called Christians that are Jewish that can make Israeli news live look like you don't know what you're talking about. That sounds like somebody's part of the agenda to me. And when they go to training FEMA, you think that's a good thing? Do you know that FEMA is going to be used to house you when they try to disarm this nation and riots break out and then the Christians will be considered the terrorists? The very Christians that are backing President uh, uh, Trump right now, who is talking about practically doing away with the First and Second Amendments, I know he's not saying do away with it, but he's willing to make the changes now. And if he's willing to make them that quick, over an attack in Florida, that even a teacher says publicly on the news, which that kind of disappeared already. She was within 20 feet of the, of the shooter. She got shot in the arm. She thought, why is the police here wearing full body armor and a, and a helmet on and a face mask so you couldn't identify him? Oh yeah, those, the kids died all right. Oh, it's easy to blame it on an autistic kid. Why? You know, let me tell you something. You know, they don't care about the autistic young man either. They don't care about him. If they don't care about little kids in Syria and they're willing to gas and kill them to justify a war to take down Assad so they can divide the land according to Daniel's prophecy, do you think they really give a flip about kids in America either? No, they do not. You better look at what a new world order is coming because they're bringing it rapidly. Oh, they're going to do whatever it takes to make sure the Pope of Rome gets Jerusalem. And that leaked document, President Trump, and I kept telling you guys, always praising, oh, praise Trump because why? He says Jerusalem is Israel's capital. And his leaked document puts the old city under international control. That's exactly what they did in 1993 under Shimon Perez and the Pope of Rome. Come on, guys, wake up, please. Please wake up. By, by the orders of the Prime Minister serving at the time, let me tell you, Governor Adnan Hussein of Nikos, here the records made by the Governor are here. If any of you want to like, you can have a photocopy of them. 
The governor states that he instructed the trucks to go there. These are the trucks that were carrying the, these things, if I understand right. Under the prime minister's order, the trucks that were going to carry the weapons and the chemical sarin gas were under the prime minister's order to go there, pick it up, and transport it. Do you know what uh, Irfan Fidan, the prosecutor who arrested the journalist, uh, uh, Ken Dunbar said? He said that Ken Dun, uh, Dundar has not falsely defamed the government or the prime minister. He said that Khan Dunbar merely disclosed a state secret, in other words, a fact. So they put the journalist in prison because he disclosed a fact that the Turkish government was involved in smuggling sarin gas through the Turkish borders into Syria to use on children. <laughs> you, think, you think I've got it any easier? Oh, they'd love to get me locked up. I'll start a revival in your prisons. I guarantee you I would. So what is Ken Dundar's article about? An article which the prosecutor Irfan Fidan's own admission was not defamatory. It was about the weaponry that was sent to ISIS. No wonder why Erdogan had to fake a coup in his country with the help of the United States. Because there were too many people in the Turkish government that were exposing the plans that involved the United States, President Barack Hussein Obama, CIA, MI6, and a whole lot of others. They were exposing that information and that was going all over the world. They couldn't have it. You might want to copy this video because I guarantee you, I don't think it's going to stay up long. That is our public prosecutor, Padan, states that Ken Dundar did not falsely defame the government. He disclosed a fact, a state secret. Now, for saving a time, Erdogan, or Aaron Erdem here, goes into a lot more facts. And it clearly indicts. It indicts like never before all those involved. And it exonerates Seymour Hersh as giving factual information. Now, we're going to turn to the last one here that I want to bring out. And this here is Seymour Hersh, one of his more latest articles. And I'm just going to read a little bit in here. Trump's red line on the Welt, which is a German newspaper, Politik Ausland, by Seymour Hersh. This came out on the June the 25th, 2017. I was unaware of this article myself. All right, so we're going to look at the first three paragraphs. On April the 6th, United States President Donald Trump authorized an early morning Tomahawk missile strike on uh, Sherat Air Base in central Syria in retaliation for what he said was a deadly nerve agent attack carried out by the Syrian government. Two days earlier in the rebel-held town of Khan Shikun, Trump issued the order despite having been warned by U.S. intelligence community that it had found no evidence that the Syrian had used a chemical weapon. Now, I want to show you, President Trump, unfortunately, followed right into the same path as Obama did. And this is very unnerving, friends. It's unnerving, let me tell you. But it, but it goes to show that in each case... Erdogan, excuse me, uh, President Bashar al-Assad had nothing to do with the chemical weapons against his own people, as they allege. This is Khan Sheikhoun, and believe me, there are a lot of those out there that said I lied. Oh, they, he really used the chemical weapons, and we know the intelligence. Yeah, you're going to see what the intelligence was on that. The available intelligence made clear that the Syrians had targeted a jihadist meeting site on April the 4th using Russian-supplied guided bomb equipped with conventional explosives. Details of the attack, including information on its so-called high-value targets, had been provided by the Russians days in advance to the American allied military officials in Doha, whose mission is to coordinate all U.S. allied Syrian and Russian air force operations in the region. 
Some American military intelligence officials were especially distressed by the president's determination to ignore the evidence. None of this makes any sense. One officer told colleagues upon learning of the decision to bomb. We know there was no chemical attack. The Russians are furious, claiming we have the real intel and know the truth. I guess it didn't matter whether we elected Clinton or Trump, Seymour Hirsch says here in that statement there. Let's move on down, though. We're going to skip, um, skip two paragraphs here. Excuse me. All right, here we go. The province of the photos was not clear and no international observer have yet inspected the site, but the immediate popular assumption worldwide was that this was a deliberate use of nerve agent sarin. Authorized by President Bashar Assad of Syria, Trump endorsed the assumption by using a statement within hours of the attack describing Assad's heinous actions as being consequence of the Obama administration. The weakness and irresolution uh, uh, ir in addressing what he said Syria's past use of chemical weapons. When the fact is that, we, that he didn't use them then either. To the dismay of many senior members of his national security team, Trump could not be swayed over the next 48 hours of intense briefings and decisions making in a series of interviews. I learned the total disconnect between the president and many of his military advisors and intelligence officials, as well as officers of the ground in the region who had an entirely different understanding of the nature of Syria's attack on Khan Sheikhoun. I was provided with evidence of that disconnect in the form of transcripts of real-time communications immediately following the Syrian attack on April the 4th. Real-time communications, Seymour Hirsch got. In an important pre-strike process known as deconfliction, U.S. and Russian officers routinely supply one another with advanced details of planned flight paths and target coordinates to ensure that there is no risk of collision or accidental encounter. The Russians speak on behalf of the Syrian military. This information is supplied daily to the American AWACS surveillance planes that monitor the flights once airborne. Deconfliction success and importance can be measured by the fact that there are yet to be one collision or any, uh, a, even a near miss among the high-powered supersonic American allied Russian and Syrian fighter bombers. So the point is, they're working together because, yeah, and I've seen it myself flying over Europe with, with, with fire planes shooting underneath airliners and everything else. So they work closely together with the AWACS to make sure that there's no collisions in the air. So they have to make, let each other know. Otherwise, you'd be having planes crashing into each other. Russian and Syrian Air Force officers gave details of the carefully planned flight path to and from Khan Sheikhoun on April the 4th directly in English to the deconfliction monitors aboard the AWACS plane, which was on patrol near the Turkish border 60 miles or more to the north. The Syrian target at Khan Sheikhoun, as shared with the Americans at Doha, was depicted as a two-story cinder block building in the northern part of town. Russian intelligence, which is shared when necessary with Syria and the U.S. as part of a joint fight against jihadist groups, had established that high-level meeting of jihadist leaders was to take place in the building, including representatives of Aharar al-Sham and al-Qaeda-affiliated groups formerly known as Jabhat al-Nusra. The two groups had recently joined forces and controlled the town and the surrounding area. Russian intelligence depicted the center block building as a command and control center that housed a grocery and other commercial premises on its ground floor with other essential shops nearby, including a fabric shop and electronics store. So they were giving them all the necessary information to be able to bring this out, right? All right, so let's move down a little bit further says one reason for the Russian message to Washington about the intended target was to ensure that any CIA asset or informant who had managed to work his way into the jihadist leadership was forewarned not to attend the meeting. I was told that the Russian passed a warning directly to the CIA. They were playing at the game. They were, excuse me, they were playing 
the game right, the senior advisor said. The Russian guidance noted the jihadist meeting was coming at a time of acute pressure for the insurgents. Presumably, Jabhat al-Nusra and Harar al-Sham were des- desperately seeking a path forward in the new political climate. In the last few days on March, Trump and two of his key national security aides, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, had made statements acknowledging that, as the New York Times put it, the White House has abandoned the goal of pressuring Assad to leave power, marking a sharp departure from the Middle East policy and that guided the Obama administration for more than five years. White House Secretary of State Sean Spicer told press briefing on March 31st, there is a political reality that we have to accept, implying that Assad was there to stay. All right, now, the whole point, though, that comes into all this is the fact that the CIA was involved in it as well. That they were warned as well. And you have to remember, as we saw from Aaron Erdem's information, from Seymour Hersh's information back over in 2013 about the attack then, the CIA was working with MI6 along with the Obama, the rat line that was created to smuggle the sarin gas inside of the country. We see that the, uh, from, from the uh, global research that they have been training the jihadists and using chemical weapons. So with that advanced intelligence, knowing that Syria is going to strike a building and that the Russians are going to give them a guided weapon to be able to strike that building, then why do we have suddenly some kind of little bomb that hits the road that doesn't even leave a dent very deep at all and no one is ever allowed to inspect it for the sarin gas uh, that was done by professionals. Oh, but you know, don't forget, oh, the white helmets. I forgot they were decontaminating the sarin victims with no gloves on, no gloves on, no gloves on, no protective clothing. They should have reported that they had, what, one, two, three, four, five white helmets that died that day from sarin gas. But they didn't, did they? Because once again, we're lied to. Only to justify this war against Bashar al-Assad. And make sure while they're at it, they kill all those Christians over there that are some of the oldest Christians in the world, descendants of the house of Israel. Kill all of them and burn all of their churches so that no, none of what the writings that they have from the times of Jesus ever get out to the public. Why? We can't have Syria exposing something when the Pope of Rome takes over the old city of Jerusalem, can we? I'm Stephen Benoon. You stand with this type of work we're doing here, friends. It's going to be a little shaky the next couple of days here as we're en route back home. Uh, We will be coming back to the United States, though, uh, in a few months. Pray for us. We need your prayers desperately. Support this work. Again, don't forget, we need to get on this uh, new live stream so we have a backup way. And as soon as we can get that up and going, if you want to help be a part of that, please help us to do that. We need to get the truth out. I don't know how long we'll get to pull this off on YouTube. Maybe we can stay. Maybe we'll be here for a while. Maybe they, maybe God will protect the ministry here and they won't see it. But either way, we'll have more platforms to share the truth with you. God bless you. Thank you for watching. I've got a very special report. I probably won't be able to do it until I get to Europe, but I want to bring out a very insightful revelation about what's happening in the leadership of Israel prophetically. You will be amazed to know the prophecy that Prime Minister Netanyahu has been fulfilling. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Syria. I think what Alfred said is so true. We are fighting a mass of propaganda that has demonized the Syrian government, demonized its leaders, a, an effort that precedes every other intervention that the United States has made over the course of many, many decades in order to convince people that it's okay for quote unquote humanitarian reasons to overthrow a government and to replace it with whatever.